So we're obviously starting things off a little bit different this week. Because this week I am too angry to wait through the intro and the sponsor and all that shit. And like, look, I, so right up front, I get that for most of you, this is just the noise that you listen to on the way to work. And you don't want to hear about the how the sausage gets made drama that goes on behind the scenes. I get that, right? But for some people, this show is a community. It's an alternative to the religious communities that they left, the, the church groups that disfellowship them, the, the, the friend groups that shun them. And for some of us, it's even more than that. For some of us, it's a family. Instead of family reunions, we have live shows and conventions, but it's a family nonetheless. Hell, it's better than a family because we mostly really like each other. Well, last week, the news broke that somebody hurt my family. What's worse, what's, what's kept me up every night since is the fact that it's somebody I invited into the goddamn house. On Wednesday of last week, while Heath, Eli, and I were recording the last episode of this show, a story was released in Religion News Services that detailed multiple allegations of sexual misconduct by Andrew Torres of the Opening Arguments podcast. You'll know him from his frequent appearances on this show, as well as our sister shows, God Awful Movies and The Skeptocrat. Now, you might not be familiar with the site, but I can assure you that Religion News Services is a legitimate news source. It's one that I've used for years and years now. Now, since this story broke, as is so often the case, a number of new allegations have come forward. In the wake of all of this, we met with Andrew, who, in addition to being our lawyer and our friend, was also a minority owner of our company. He agreed that it was in the best interest of both the company and the community if he stepped aside and we severed all ties. We released a statement to that effect a few hours after the story broke. Now, to be clear, given the nature of the matter... There's a lot of shit I can't say. There are a lot of terms I can't use, a lot of journalistic best practices that I have to abide by. And I always hate shackling my tongue. But this is one of the instances where it physically hurts. You know, but maybe it's for the best. Like, maybe it's best that I have, to some degree, been deprived of my outrage here, right? Because let's face it, we always have outrage. Every fucking time. And where has that gotten us over and over again? Our community has put its trust in men and then seen that trust betrayed. And when it comes to light, we invariably respond with a sound and a theory signifying nothing. I owe you better than outrage. I brought someone into this community that did real harm to it. I owe you more than that. And I owe you more than I'm sorry and I'll do better, right? Because I am sorry and I will do better, but that's not enough. The walls of our community just came crashing down. And when that happens, you don't respond by just apologizing. You also respond by building better walls. So that's what we're trying to do. In the wake of these allegations, an organic effort arose in several online communities to create a new system of accountability. In retrospect, we realized that our thinking had been governed by a careless assumption that it couldn't happen here. We didn't even have a system in place where victims of sexual harassment could come forward, nor did we have a, an established set of procedures for what to do if somebody did. That means that if someone was victimized, the only person they could tell about it was like the friend and business partner of the person that did it. And, and, and then it counts on that person to objectively assess a claim against a friend. That's not tenable. That cannot work. Clearly, what we need is an independent body that can handle accusations like that. We need a, a tag that we can put at the end of the show that says, you know, if you've experienced sexual harassment or sexual assault by anyone affiliated with our podcast, you can call this number, you can email this email, whatever. We need to empower that group to investigate. We need to indemnify that group against publishing accusations of wrongdoing. And what's more, that group needs to operate with all reasonable transparency, and it needs to be funded in such a way that it's not financially dependent on the success of the people it's investigating. And we're not the only ones that need this. Our community is made up of scores of podcasts and, and, and YouTube channels and TikToks and, and bloggers. The, the constituent parts range in size from international organizations with hundreds of staff and volunteers to one and two person operations that just had to incorporate to take on ad revenue, right? All of them need the same kind of accountability and all of them want it. You know, at least the, the ones worth having. So we want to create an organization that can provide this service throughout the secular community. But we need more than that. We also need to educate people. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd never thought about it before I learned about these allegations, but I literally 
would have had no idea what to do if one of the accusers had come to me about it. I, I would have been there Googling what to do when your business partner is accused of sexual harassment. And let me tell you, most of the advice you find when you Google that is not coming from a person with the victim's best interest you know, at the top of their priority list. Now, now, we're in the very early stages of creating this organization. I say we, but the first thing that the group did once we brought them together was kick me out. And for good reason, right? Like if, if the goal is to regulate the industry I'm in, I shouldn't be exerting any influence on how it's put together. The people who are doing the work so far are a mix of sexual assault survivors, listeners, and concerned members of the community. And, and if you'd like to get involved, incidentally, be sure to check out the Scathing Atheist Facebook page. Tim will be posting updates over the next few days, directing people on the best ways to help. Everything's still a bit chaotic, so apologies if we don't have clear directions right away. But even just having a list of volunteers for when the organization is ready for them is going to be really useful long term. And even though I'm not directly involved with the formation of the organization, I'm still in constant contact with the people that are. Puzzle and a Thunderstorm has pledged $10,000 to help get this thing started. And, and we've already secured several other meaningful sources of funding. We, we've been in contact with a number of the major organizations in the community, and the responses have been universally receptive to the idea. Real and meaningful movement is underway. And that was true even before they kicked me out. Right now, now, we don't exactly know what's going to come from these efforts. At minimum, we're going to get an independent reporting system, but everyone involved has far more exciting long-term goals. We ultimately want a victims fund that provides legal resources to people who fear retribution for public accusations. We want, we want to create a restorative component that can help victims heal. We want to create a model of how a community comes together to protect itself, but whatever we create, we'll do it knowing that it came too late. And that's the biggest takeaway. Di diversity isn't a goal because it, it makes atheism's college brochure look better. It isn't a goal just because it, it makes it you know, more inviting for members of underrepresented minorities. It's a goal because it affects the way we think. It affects the decisions we make and the ones that we don't make. When people complain about this being an overwhelmingly male community, it's not just because they're keeping some fucking gender scorecard. It's because, let's face it, if this community had more equal representation, this would have been a thing years ago. We fucked up. We left vulnerable people in our community undefended. We failed them. And it's not enough to 